Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another great tutorial by Vertex Digital Arts. Today we're going to teach you how to build a mini application. Now this is not going to be a full tutorial. We're going to show you how to build a clock in NetBeans and Java. Um, and then obviously you guys can use the time to create alerts, deadlines, uh, basically whatever you want to create, meetings, whatever. So the first thing we want to do is we want to have a nice font to use. Let's just open up Google and then I already downloaded a font. So you can type in clock style font into Google and then look for the font. I find the font has quite nice fonts. I downloaded this one. It's called DS Digital. And to simply install a font, you click on download. I'm on a Windows PC, of course. And as you guys can see, there's four types of text styles. I think is there four? There's four types, okay? So you can see the previews right here. We have uh, these four right here. You guys can choose whichever one you like. I personally like the last one. So I'm going to look for DSDIGIB, DSDIGIB, right here, dot TTF, double click, install, you want to replace it, why not, and it'll install it, takes really quick, a few seconds, and that's it, that's how you get a font, and then you simply open up your program, and you're ready to use your new font set. So I've created this simple program, it just looks like this, undecorated frame, custom buttons, very sleek, very simple looking uh, custom made frame. And we're going to be displaying the time in it. So obviously what we want to do is, okay, firstly, you want to restart NetBeans, just in case your text font doesn't appear immediately. But just to be on the safe side, you know, just uh, restart your NetBeans. Oh, whoops. And then once that is done, you just want to grab a label, stretch it out to however big you want. I want mine quite big so you guys can see it. And then you can see it disappeared. So when something disappears, a component in Java disappears, it's mostly because it's been put around, uh, been put behind another layer or another component. So you just want to drag it above the background layer because my background is currently this image that you're looking at right now. Now let's just change the variable name to clock and let's get into the settings. So properties. Now this is what our time is going to be displayed in. So let's just make sure that it looks quite nice. Remove the text in there currently. Uh, let's get it out space ready nicely. Let's change the width. Let's get the height done. Uh, let's change the width to 330, maybe a little bit more than that, 335 should work fine, 335, there we go. Now if you guys want to create the exact same thing I'm doing, here are the coordinates for my J-frame size, 415 by 215, and uh, yeah, you guys can just continue following on. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to change the horizontal alignment to center, that way it starts off in the middle and then expands left and right. Just so that everything is even, it's all in the middle, despite whatever or however long the text is. Because if you guys look at the time, you can see it's always changing sizes. 41 is, the one is smaller than, you know, something like 2 or whatever. Just to make sure it's all correctly sized. So let's set the text in here. Now, whenever you're working in Java or NetBeans, whatever text you plan on having in a text field is what you should set it to be. Just so that you guys can uh, experiment with the font size. Uh, the font, the color, stuff like that. So let's say 7, double dot, 45, double dot, 50, or 60, 50, PM, okay? There you go, you cannot actually see it. So let's change the color. Now, because I'm going with the blue theme, I already like blue, I'm going to set it to a common color I always use, 165 for green, 255 for blue, and then 0 for red. And this will create a nice blue. There we go. You guys can see it. 745 50 p.m. That looks kind of crap. So what we want to do is we want to change the text font. Now we downloaded one called DS Digital. Okay. And then we want to set the size. Let's go for something like 68. Why not? And that looks beautiful. You guys can see how wonderful that looks. It looks like a real professional clock. And I think that looks really good. So I'm going to edit the text. Get the time out of there. We are ready to code. So let's go into the source code and you can see I've already imported two imports, calendar and Gregorian calendar, which we'll be using in a second. Now, okay, let's just delete that. I rather just show you guys everything in one go. Okay, so this, now this is a tutorial for helping you guys out to end up, whoops, sorry about that guys, I knocked my pop filter, I'm not sure if you guys heard that. But uh, I was saying that this is a tutorial to show you guys how to build a clock. Now obviously you're not going to stare at your clock the whole day, you're going to create a widget or something, you want to create something that will alert you for meetings, alert you for deadlines, 
and stuff like that. So what happens is because you have a clock and because you have a deadline and an alarm clock and whatever else you want to create, you need to have multiple threads so that everything can happen simultaneously. You can uh, basically a thread is something that allows two things or more to happen at the same time. So if you holding your iPhone in your hand and uh, you're getting messages from your friends while listening to music and browsing the internet those are three different threads you have one to play music one to get messages from your friend and the last one is to browse the web so without threads you cannot do multiple things at once so we're going to create a new thread so let's just go into the constructor because there's no point in creating a new method really um, this is just a startup tutorial you guys can put in your own method if you want so to create a new thread all we do is we type in new thread with a capital T create our brackets and then after the last bracket you just want to type in dot start there we go that's how you create a thread and then in order to activate a thread and actually use it you need to have a method called run so public void public void run there we go that's our thread oh, oops too lazy let's backspace this public void run there we go so anything you type in uh, the run okay there we go I had an error there so whatever goes in the run method will essentially be in a new thread so the first thing we want to do is we want to have a while loop now why do we want to have a while loop because basically we want our code to run over and over and over again basically loop itself an infinite amount of times until we tell it to stop and the only time we're going to tell it to stop is when we want to close the application. So let's create a variable name. So on the top, let's create int. Um, let's give it a name int time run. Int time run is equal to zero. Okay. So you can name it anything you want. This is just a crude way of creating a while loop that'll run forever. So we're going to say while time run equals equals zero. So this thing is going to run over and over and over again because time run is equal to zero. Okay, so now that we have that done, we want to create our calendar object. So calendar, just give it a name, calendar cal is equal to new calendar. Oh, whoops, I forgot that you actually have to type in Gregorian, Gregorian. There we go, calendar cal equals new Gregorian calendar. Okay. Uh, if you guys are wondering, I'm using a different type of theme. It's a Sublime Text 2 replica. It's called Monaku something, Monaku 2, I don't know. You guys can Google that. Um, it's just easy on the eyes for me. Okay, so once we have our calendar object, we want to start creating hour, minute, second, and the AM or PM um, meridian or I don't know whatever it's called. So in this calendar class, they use ints for everything. So ints int uh, let's say int hour is equal to calendar or cal dot get and then you want to open up these brackets and in the brackets you want to type in calendar dot hour okay so that gets the hour from your pc clock so the hour is 7 7 pm so it gets 7 puts it in the hour variable so let's just copy and paste this because it's the same thing for the next three actually so hour minutes second and then uh, am pm okay so in here it's the same thing it's just changing hour to minute uh, changing minute to second and then in the last one you change hour to am underscore pm okay perfect now what we want to do is we want to create a long string of stuff so what we're going to do is we're just going to say string I really need to get my typing so string text text not text string time is equal to hour plus minute plus second now keep in mind hour minute and second is all integers so if you just simply put a plus sign what's going to happen is it's just going to add up three numbers so it's going to say, say it's going to say 7 plus 33 plus uh, 40 which is I don't know Okay, so what we want to do is we want to say hour plus an empty string so that it's converted to a string. Then plus hour plus minutes plus empty string once again plus second. That's it. And then all you do is you say, uh, not system, you say clock.setText. 
and then time. Now basically clock is our variable name for this label. So now when we run our program, you can see the time will automatically pop up in the center of our screen. So it says 7, 3, 18. It's not really, um, you know, not, not really spaced out well. And we're also missing the AM or PM. So we simply have to do is, instead of putting an empty string, put in these double dots. And then run our program, you can see it looks much better when it starts up. There we go. Looks beautiful right now. You can see the spacing is really nice. It's in the center of a program. Well, not really in the center. Uh, if I moved it over a bit more to the left, but yeah. Okay, so we're missing AM or PM. So what we have to do is, uh, this is a bit more complicated for the AM or PM, not that complicated. We want to have an if statement. Why do we want to have an if statement? Because AM or PM can either be one of the two. It can either be AM or it can be PM. Now, in this calendar class, AM is represented as a zero and PM is represented as a one. So if it's currently 7 PM right now, so this is gonna be returning a one. So if AM underscore PM equal equals one, then we wanna set some value to PM. Else, set it to AM. So if you guys don't really understand what I mean, I'll just explain one more time. The class gets the AM or PM value. If it's a PM, it's a one. If it's an AM, it's a zero. And then it returns that value into this integer called AM underscore PM. And then we just compare this variable name, whatever's in this integer variable. We compare it to our own uh, values, either one or zero. If it's a one, we'll output PM. If it's a zero, we'll output AM. So let's create a string. Uh, let's say string day. Oh, it's string, can you put a slash, string day slash night? No, you can't. Okay, so string day underscore night is equal to an empty string. Then you simply want to set day underscore night as PM. That's it. And you want to do the same thing, except you want to set it as AM in the else statement. And at the end of the second, you just want to put a empty space and then add day, I think I got it, yeah, there we go, add day underscore night. Just run our program. And there you go, you can see our beautiful clock. Looks absolutely amazing. Ticking away like nobody's business. And let's just compare it to the Windows clock. You can see, uh, judging by my eyesight, I think our program is a tad bit faster. I think, but then again, I have four eyes, so uh, my eyesight isn't that great. But there we go. You guys can just stare at this, because it looks that great. Okay, so, oh, whoops. Once you got that built, you can set an icon. Uh, you can eventually make it into a widget and put it, you know, add the, the frame drag method, put it on the corner, whatever, make it transparent. I don't know, whatever you guys want to do. You can do it. Obviously, this is a setup for you guys so that you can create your own applications. You can have it uh, create a deadline for you, create an alarm, uh, make it automatically tweet for you at 8 p.m. So when it reads the time is 8 p.m., it'll send a tweet out for you. And I think I'll add that feature for Jarvis. If you don't know what Jarvis is, watch the other videos. But anyways, this is a simple way to make a clock in Java. You can see it's absolutely amazing. I have to give myself credit sometimes. Um, but yeah, if you guys did like the tutorial, please don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe. Uh, you guys can leave a comment on what you want to see next. We currently have a tutorial on how to create your own cursor in NetBeans or Java, custom cursor just for your applications. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.